God damn, what you do? Waste a month straight for what? YouTube views? Hope it was worth it. This is one of many comments on my round 10,000 world record back in 2020. And to answer your question, Cage, yes, it was worth it. I achieved round 1,000 and higher on every possible World at War Zombies map. Here's how I did it. My journey starts back in August of 2018. I wasn't new to zombies, but was fairly unskilled. So, I decided to attempt some records, eventually putting my eyes on World at War Duris. Specifically, the round 50 speedrun, which the world record at the time, was 1 hour and 16 minutes by Dupree. I would eventually beat that by achieving 1 hour and 14 minutes nearly a month later, thanks to non-stop practice. But since I was putting so much time on Duris, I needed to try something different. So, I started focusing on one map named Farukt. Unlike Duris, Farukt has 24 zombies per round, which allows a player to reach round 1000 and higher. Although, it is the most difficult round 1000 to achieve, especially back in 2018 when only one player named Jim4495 had a round 1000 on the map. Furthermore, when you're playing solo, Quick Revive does not work on World at War. This made it significantly harder to achieve round 1000 on any map as you had to play flawless. Also, since I wasn't the best at zombies, I just focused on getting round 100. Now, since this was 4 years ago, I don't have much documentation of the rounds I achieved on Verruckt or really any map. But, my first highlight on my Twitch channel was me achieving round 159 on August 15th, 2018. Obviously, this was a really good round for me at the time. Not only was this my first round 100 on Verruckt, but I also nearly got insta-kill rounds. However, this personal best would remain for a very long time. The reason why it lasted so long is because of how difficult Verruckt is. If you haven't played World at War or don't know much about it, there's no spawn control on the map. So, what I did was spawn on the jug side of the map and open all doors leading to power. This meant I only had half of the map opened, but it made it safer and faster as less windows were open on the map. This eventually allowed me to achieve round 220 after one year of grinding on August 9th of 2019. Once again, this would remain my highest round achieved on the map until roughly May of 2020 when I achieved round 436. I still wasn't even halfway to 1000, but I knew I eventually could get it. Especially considering I was 5th place on the leaderboard at the time. Amazingly, Within just a couple of months, I would achieve round 1003 on August 11th, 2020. This wasn't my first ever round 1000 on World at War, but it was my first on Verruckt. It would also become the fastest round 1000 on the map. Furthermore, I would achieve a higher round on Verruckt in the future, but I'll talk about that later as the main focus right now is my journey to round 1000 on every possible map. If we go back in time to 2018, the only other map I focused on for round 1000 was Shinonuma. Amazingly, my first documented round was 932 back in November of 2018. I also achieved this round without Jug, which was a world record at the time. So, because I nearly achieved round 1000 without Jug, I decided to play with Jug. At the time, I thought this was going to be fairly easy, but man was I wrong. Instead of running the typical flogger strategy, I decided to run a somewhat new strategy named Fast Strat. The way the strategy worked is a player would train in the flogger area, but never activate it. This allowed them to play much faster, however it was significantly more difficult. In fact, it was so difficult for me that I wouldn't beat it until January of 2020 by reaching round 983. This is my fourth 900 on the map, and I still couldn't get round 1000 despite having tons of practice and using Juggernog. I know this might sound odd, but at the time I found this a little embarrassing. 
No matter what I did, I couldn't get round 1000 on arguably one of the easiest maps. Furthermore, I livestreamed this on my Twitch for people to watch which didn't make me feel too confident. Although, in order to achieve the round I wanted, I had to continue playing. And that's exactly what I did. It wasn't until March of 2020 I would start grinding Shidonuma again to achieve my first 1000, but things didn't go to plan. You see, at the time, me and many players restarted for Cook Revive or Double Tap in the Fishing Hut. The reason we did this is because it allowed us to save a ton of time in dog rounds and also allowed me to play them safer, eventually causing me to achieve my first 1000. To be exact, round 1853, which ended due to a disc error. Once again, similar to Verruckt, I would achieve a much higher round in the future, but since I achieved my goal of 1000 plus, I was pretty happy. So, because I achieved round 1000 on both Verruckt and Shinonuma, the next map was knocked. And let me tell you, for someone who wasn't the best at zombies back in 2018, to achieve even round 100 was a disaster. Granted, it didn't help I was running a strategy named Knocked One Door. This was a strategy created by Dupree back in 2015, which involved a player training in the mystery box room with the help door open. The strategy was insanely fast as the two couches on the map were closed, but it was extraordinarily difficult. In fact, the highest round anyone achieved at the time was 436 by Dupree back in 2016. Since it was so low and I wasn't the best at zombies, I would only achieve a maximum round of 54. Although, that would change later on. In August of 2019, Dupree would finally figure out the hoard up for Knocked One Door and would achieve round 1558 running pre-patch flamethrower. This made the map easier as you would be able to kill the zombies faster, but it did prove even with a post-patch run, a player such as Dupree could reach around 1000 and potentially above. Due to this, I would start playing Knocked in May of 2020, eventually achieving round 306, which had a pretty nice clutch on round 294. Shoot. <laughs> Unfortunately, this wouldn't allow me to play further as I downed just 12 rounds later. Although, this motivated me to continue going. Right after my 306 game, I would launch up another knocked game, which would end my quest to reach round 1000 on every map. I achieved round 1306, a game which ended to me backing up in the corner and getting surrounded by zombies. This is unfortunate as I was a little over 700 rounds off the world record, but I was still happy. This was the furthest anyone played knocked one door with post patch flamethrower and I was still able to get a ton of practice in. So because I achieved round 1000 on every possible world at war map, does that mean my journey was done? Nope. In fact, it was far from being done. Remember earlier in the video when I said I reached around 1000 and higher? Well, I went a little above and beyond. Right after my knocked game, I would go back to playing Shinonuma and attempt to break the world record, which was around 9072 held by Instakiller. However, instead of running the flogger strategy, I would run a new strategy found by me known as 2020 strat. This is significantly faster than flogger and could theoretically allow a player to reach round 12,000. At least that's what me and many other players thought. When I started surviving up to round 1,500 plus, I would crash. And I would crash a lot. I can't believe you're that dedicated. Oh my God. What's up?
fucking machine man, how are you? The reason why I crashed so many times is because the strategy is absurdly fast. Essentially, there's these things called child variables, and the faster you play, the faster they add up. And once they reach 48,000 child variables, your game has a very high chance of crashing, and that chance will continue to increase the more child variables you get. So, the only way to avoid crashing is to play at a slower speed, which is what I ended up doing. The only issue is, even if you try to play slower running 2020 strat, the strategy is still so fast that you will crash even if you attempt to slow yourself down. This makes the strategy not viable for world record attempts, as you'll always crash when you use it. So, what I ended up doing is switching to Flogger. The only issue now is the world record increased by nearly 1,000 rounds. Instead of it being 9,072, it was now 9,948 by Riv 10. This made the record slightly more difficult to beat, but that didn't stop me from trying. Hell, I probably shouldn't have gone for the record, as my personal best was now 2,558, but I did so anyway, and it paid off big time. The round I would achieve would be 10,751, making this the first ever round 10,000. Despite this, it was fairly unoptimized, but it would stand for almost two years, eventually being broken by Matateu, who reached round 11,402. But then, just three weeks later, I would get the record back by achieving round 11,482, which was a pain in the ass to get. The reason why is because similar to my 10,000 game, I had to deal with a crazy amount of crashes. I crashed on round 4,000 and above over 7 times starting in January of 2021. If you count just the crashes alone and exclude the restarts, the total time I spent in these 7 crashes added up to 346 hours. And that's just in-game time, not including the times I paused or anything else. So to beat this record is possible, but it is absurdly luck-based and time-consuming. Since this is the current world record, let's go back to Noct. After my 1306 game, I didn't play the map for months as I wanted to focus on Shidonuma and Duris to try and break my round 148 record, which I achieved back in November of 2019. Only issue is, I was getting bored of Duris, so I decided to do some knocked one door restarts just to entertain myself until tomorrow when I would be ready to play Duris again. Problem is, that tomorrow would be extended by 21 days. Now I know what you're probably asking. Krups, how does tomorrow last 21 days? That makes zero sense. Well, you see, I unintentionally got into a knocked game, which doubled the high round world record on my first try despite not playing the map for months. The round I achieved was 5,262, which broke the previous record by 2,751 rounds. So, I'll take it, I guess? I mean, I wasn't even trying to get a game going, but I don't mind quadrupling my previous personal best on my first try in months. Oh, and I got the 100 speedrun world record too, which I'm not complaining. I will say this. Noct was extremely boring to play, which is ironic because I wanted to play it to stop being bored. It didn't help that I spent 95 hours in this game and played it across 21 days. To put it bluntly, after school, this is pretty much all I played. Granted, it was better than doing nothing, especially since I livestreamed the whole thing on my Twitch, but it eventually got to the point where I wanted the game to end. Thankfully, it did, and I was able to play Verrucked. Starting in November, I would start grinding Verrucked and attempt to break the world record which was now 1817. 
After just roughly two weeks of grinding, I would beat my round 1003 personal best and achieve a new world record of round 2172. This was arguably my most important record that I've ever achieved. Even though I only beat the previous record by a little over 300 rounds, I finally held all four Soul High Round World records at once. The first starting in November 2019 with my round 148 Doris game, and finally ending a year later with my 2172 Farrakt game. This was shocking, at least for me. In November 2019, when I broke the Doris record, I expected that to be my only high round record ever. But within just a year, I went from one high round record to completely dominating all four records. Because of how shocking and overwhelmed I was, I actually started crying when I achieved this feat. Come on. Oh my god, I finally did it! I did it! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> I won't lie, I do cringe a little bit when I look at myself crying, but at the same time, I can't really blame myself. Even though the records were fairly unoptimized and can be pushed way further, the fact I became the first person in history to dominate a zombies game is a rare feat, even if it's just four maps. And the best part about all of this, I still wasn't done. A year and a half later, I would break the Varrocked record once again by achieving round 3,365, making this the first time anyone broke the previous Varrocked record by over 1,000 rounds. Obviously, this record, as well as all my current records, are relatively unoptimized, assuming you know a fair amount about World at War. Due to this, it wouldn't surprise me if my records are broken very soon. So, to try and keep up with the competition, I've been streaming record attempts on my Twitch, specifically World at War Doris. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee I'll break the Doris record ever again, but, if you do want to watch my attempts, I'll leave a link to my Twitch in the description. Also, I do plan on doing some absurd round 100 challenges on other maps, so expect me to livestream those challenges within the next upcoming weeks. Anyway, take care, and thank you for watching.